Pat Kane. Um, I'm a data guy as opposed to a sensor guy. So everybody is, how fast can I get the script to work? I'm one of the, wow, I have 50 terabytes of data. What can I find in it? Uh, and so I'm uh, at the Cooper Kane Group. I also work at Boston College, and I'm the data guy at the Anti-Fishing Working Group. Um, oh, yeah, and I'm supposed to say Zeke, not bro anymore. Uh, so my big line is I don't do big data. I do large data. Uh, and we've been trying to figure out how to use the tools to save us some time. Um, everybody who's young wants to go crazy. Us old guys say, nah, let's not. So we have kind of hypothetical environment where there's uh, some taps that feed bro. It bumps through Kafka a little bit for buffering, ends up in Elasticsearch. Uh, and we also have an arc site that c c gets everything else known that mankind put into it. Uh, and there are times that we go back and forth trying to figure out what actually is happening. Uh, and we started doing this a lot and said, this is kind of silly because every time the arc site sees something, it shoots it, it shoots it off into a ticketing database and we have to go kind of figure out what's going on. And said, well, that'd be nice, but we like to influence it with some, some of the Zeke stuff. And so we made a little filtering connection that shows up just in time, that shoots stuff into the sim. And so the sim can actually look at something that Zeke did, and we can add username, is this a high value target, is this somebody we care about, is this a part of the campus we care about, and then spit out that stuff. So we don't have to rewrite all that things, all the things in uh, Zeke, but just actually have it uh, enhanced by the arc site. We also have lots of firewall logs that go into both places. And recently we added an MSSP to, who's supposed to help us. And it was like, well, this is exciting. So uh, we're now doing about 50,000 events a second into Kafka uh, and keeping stuff around. So we do have lots of data. And we're trying to figure out how to correlate it all together. So we came up with this interesting idea that will show up soon. Well, I just talked about this. But it's a really good idea. Uh, it should be here in 10 seconds or so. And Jeff, if you want a database, I run all the databases at APWG. We'll give you a feed. Tell me what you want in your feed. We'll take all your JAL3. Uh, so we have an SSP. They said they're going to watch stuff as we sleep. And we said, oh, that's exciting. And they run Snort, a modified version of Snort. And so we get a shitload of tickets every morning because Snort saw this. And we're like, is that exciting? And he said, you know, let's write a script. So we have a script that logs into their ticketing system, pulls down the ticket, grabs the IP address, the port, and what it was, bangs it into Elasticsearch, look at the bro logs, and says, is it a connection? No, because the downstream firewall got it. Firewall got it. Fantastic. Closed the ticket. Is it actually got a connection? Is it port 80? Did the response come back and it's not a 200? Great. Closed the ticket. If it is actually something we want to see, then maybe we should forward along to us. The vendor has been very impressed with how fast we're responding to their tickets. <laughs> uh, and we get, now we're doing one every couple of days instead of 15 a day. Um, and we use student workers for some of this stuff, and even they didn't want to do this. And so they wrote the Python script to go do all this stuff. And so it was actually pretty good. So that got us thinking that, hey, we did this for these guys. Maybe we could do it for ourselves. And so we kept thinking. Oh. And we came up and said, well, we run Snort too. We run a bunch of other stuff. So let's look at some other things. And so Snort says, oh my god, evil RDP happened. Yeah, well, it's blocked at the firewall. It's probably not really going to happen. Uh, hey, did the remote shell get successful? Let's go back to Elasticsearch, pull some of the, the other stuff out to see if what's there. We just started an idea, which was we have a Zeek behind an F5 and the decrypt stuff coming in. So we look at stuff that came in that's decrypted. We say, hey, this is kind of silly. Let's go back in Elasticsearch and see if the encrypted stream went anyplace else on campus in places that we don't have any visibility. Um, and then we can call somebody up and say, hey, you need to go uh, deal with this because you probably got infected. Uh, and so linking all the tools together has actually been pretty good. On the side, uh, we're actually trying to figure out how to actually just intercept some of the Bitcoin miners and just kind of take like 10% off as it goes by. Uh, if you have any ideas, let us know. But it's our goal to keep tuition low. <laughs> and I think that's it. Maybe, maybe not. So we're trying to, to, to link all the tools together for automation. And so that's what we're trying to do now with things. And so I'm only running about eight or nine gig of traffic through Zeek. And so everything runs pretty good. I don't have to deal with, uh, oh my god, how fast can I make it, or memory allocs or stuff, because you throw 100 cores at it, it's mostly happy. <laughs>